So welcome to It's a Fit Life Creation podcast episode. Thank you. We're super excited to have Virginia. And Virginia is um, an incredible author, speaker, transformative coach, and so much more. She um, wrote a book, Meaningful Freedom, Finding Freedom Through Wholeness, and we're gonna be talking about four stages. But first, wanted to give you more insight into our incredible guest today. She's a gift guide, a writer of divine inspirations, sharer of lessons received on her gift journey. She's also um, written, as I mentioned, several different uh, books. She's also the creator of Transformative Power and much, much more. And we're gonna be sharing on meaningful freedom as well as her book today. So welcome, Virginia. Thank you, thank you for having me, I'm so excited. Absolutely, <laughs> so um, tell them what else you wanna share about your story first before we get into the four stages and et cetera. Yeah, well, basically my story has been um, a story of transformation, basically. I left my corporate career about six years ago and I thought you know, freedom really came from switching from corporate into entrepreneurship. And I remember the first year of entrepreneurship that I saw myself doing the same career in an entrepreneurial environment. So basically I was working like forever, like long hours, and I was like, okay, wait a minute. I'm in entrepreneurship and I'm doing the exact same thing I did in corporate. So what I realized was for freedom that we need to go within to really find our freedom. And, and that that's where freedom comes. And then it really helped me see, whoa, okay, well, for me to be free, yes, the environment matters. However, what matters the most is my internal environment. I love that you hit on so many different points that absolutely resonate from past conversations that we've had. So also to share with you guys, just really quick, how Virginia and I connected. I went to the Bridge Community Accelerator. So those of you that don't know what an accelerator is, it helps entrepreneurs ramp up their business faster, scale faster with mentorship, etc. So I sat down to eat lunch, Virginia sat down at the same table, and then we just started connecting on a number of different things and on topics like this, time freedom, location freedom, mental freedom, live, leaving corporate America, and so many things resonated and we've now met, I think, three or four times now. Yes, so, about four times. Yeah. So I love that and I love that, you, that your awareness you realized that you recreated the same thing that you knew before. And I definitely walked through that too, that, oh, I incorporate, it was like, you have to work all these hours. You have to show up eight to five, nine to five, whatever. You don't have breaks in between. You don't get to create in between how you want. And then you realize that, and it's the same thing for me. Yes. Oh my God, that's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> the space, yeah. because you realize like, wait a minute, I don't have to work straight from eight to five. Like I can stop after two, three hours and go do something fun. Then I can get back to work. Then I can do something <laughs> fun. Like I don't have to ask someone, can I go take an hour to go to the gym? Yes, exactly, yeah. So, it's so different. <laughs> such a different mindset, you guys. So thank you for joining those of you that are tuning in live. We're super excited to see you, so thank you. Hi. So, and I love like so many tokens of wisdom and you can tell, and what was your role in corporate before? Uh, I was doing international marketing and traveling around the world and went to over 19 countries doing marketing and uh, corporate strategy. And during those trips of those 19 countries, I was really like, I guess I got really awakened to all the different, you know, what was in the world really, you know, like what all the opportunities were, like, all the mindsets around it, and I really got awakened to my desire to make a difference in the world, and I feel like those aspects really inspire my inner exploration. So it started, I believe, in an outer exploration of going to all these places and visiting all these amazing countries, and then it became an inner exploration desire. I love that. So, so many things. So you went to, you're in strategy, you were in marketing, you got to travel to 19 countries. Um, totally resonate with that. <laughs> and, and again, we were just talking about this, you guys, like you attract like you know, who you are, like multi-passionate. You like the inner, but you love the outer. You love the travel. I've also been to 25 countries. Oh my God, I love awesome. to travel. But to your point, the more you travel, and the more you realize, like outside of your city, outside of your state, outside of your country, you realize that, hey, this is how 
people think or do things here or this is the culture here but then you realize like hey this is how they do it over there and there's great things about how they do it over there too exactly yes and like and you learn and you're exposed to so many different things so um no, I love that. I love like the insight and getting clear on the inner exploration. Like, who am I? How do I want to show up in the world? And how do I want to serve? Exactly. Yeah. Do I want to serve? Uh, do I want to serve in like this capacity, or do I also want to serve in this capacity? Because obviously, doing marketing also correlates to what you're doing now with transformative power, with Virginia Nava, with being an author. Yes. Yeah. I believe marketing is. You know, I really kind of run away from marketing for a few years after I became a spiritual writer. And what I realized is that you cannot run away from marketing <laughs> because eventually you're marketing yourself all the time. So you are sharing who you are in the world and marketing is that. Like it's basically, you know, telling the world who you are, telling your story, um, impacting others through communication. So what I found for me, it was that I got a renewed perspective of what marketing was, which was if I serve in how I communicate, then I make the world better. So my passion for words that you know started when I was like 17 and I wanted to do all these big campaigns and change the world, really got reunited with me where like really, you know, through the power of a word, you can encourage somebody. Through the power of a word, you can inspire. Through the power of one where you can actually tell people what you do so they can come you know see you so that was kind of for me a, a new perspective on marketing that i really kind of like kind of run away a little bit for it but i think the running away was part partly because you know once you kind of find you, who you are and your true self then now the next step is to take the courage to share it no i love that so a couple of things on that because i definitely went through a similar journey <laughs> yeah. when you're in not i'm not gonna say every company but a lot of companies and corporations really look at marketing like very like not heart driven not purpose driven very like tactical you know how what's the reach what's this what's that which that's important but it's more i believe it's more important to align it to who you are mm -hmm. and to your mission and to your passion and to your purpose and then speak from that like i'm very passionate about sharing stories because yeah. that creates more relatability it creates more community like all those things and then like how you talked about like sharing your story like if people don't know who you are and people don't know what you do and people don't know how you can serve them well you know someone marie forleo talks about this that like we have a duty to to share our story to share our message to share how we can help people transform because you're gonna relate to someone that's gonna really connect with you versus I'm gonna relate to someone versus maybe mutually we can relate to someone. Mm -hmm. And if they don't know about you, well then you can't help them through the power of the word, through the power of the tools that you offer, the you know the resources that you offer, that I offer, whatever it is yes. that we offer, like you know collectively, then we can't help someone else. Exactly. Like well, the same yeah. way you got to a certain point because people poured into you, the same way I got to a certain point and continue to, likewise, like it all goes full circle all the time. Yes. And I found for me when I was writing my books, I decided to write the books because I was going through this journey and I was like, whoa, it would have been nice that somebody would have, you know, I would have found that person in my journey telling me what they went through. And that's when I really realized that it was it was not even like, well, let me find, you know, like, let me do this so somebody can find me. It was more of a responsibility. I have a responsibility to put in words what I went through so that somebody, when they go through that, they can have access to what I went through. And, and I, I'm really grateful I did because my two books, I, I wrote them a few years ago. And I can tell you, now I'm going through other things that I'm actually writing about, right? And... If I haven't written about that stage of life, I might have forgotten about it, right? And then I couldn't be able to serve somebody with it. So as we are actually kind of like documenting our journey, then we can actually serve with it. And then that to me is the true goal of our stories. And a lot of times we forget. Well, not just forget. I love like so many points you brought up. It's I firmly believe in like creating transforming, inspiring. And oh, part of it's yeah. thinking, yeah. part of inspiring is you share your story and you recognize that your story is not your own. Yeah. It's designed to help others. I it's it. and a lot of times we get stuck in, you know, the fear, the shame, the guilt 
and oh, I don't want to tell anyone because they're going to judge me. Mm -hmm. But you guys, people are going to judge regardless. <laughs> yes. And so by not showing up, you're allowing those people that are going to judge you negatively to have power over you versus realizing like, I love that you use the word responsibility. Yes. That we each have a responsibility to share what we walk through as a wife, as a mom, as a transformative, you know, power creator. I talk about, you know, uh, simplifying and overcoming health, overcoming business, walking through stuff with money. Like I believe, like I walk through those things so that I could help other people. Yes. Clear the clutter and simplify. Yeah. So it's the same concept of realizing, like, okay, I walk through this, and yes, maybe it sucked. And it was painful. <laughs> yeah. But if I can help one person or five people or 10 people or a thousand people or a billion, whatever it is, it was worth it. Yes, I believe so. And, and I believe, you know, the inspiring part that you're talking about is so important. Like, I was walking this mountain the other day and I, you know, and I was like, I'm not a mountain worker, right? But then I was put in the mountain and it was like time to walk. And I'm like, well, and I'm like, you know, and I'm like, there's two options. I either walk the mountain or I'm eaten by a mountain lion. So I walked the mountain and then what I realized in that moment is the reason why I walked the mountain is first because I didn't even knew what I was made of and what I was capable of. And then second, I didn't, I, I needed to tell the person behind me what happened, right? So I believe that is where inspiration comes, right? The person goes through it and they're like, yes, you can do it. And these are the tools that you can use to do it. And, and, now, it. and now the tools, you know, are given to the other person instead of you keeping them. Right. You're sharing. Yes. And I love that you said, because I was telling one of my mentors, uh, Garrett Jones, that I felt like, oh, I'm climbing the mountain. But I love, like, I love that you said, like, I've never, and I've heard that before, but I've never heard a reference that either I can climb the mountain or I can be eaten by the mountain. <laughs> oh, that's that's really, that was true. I was at the real mountain. You know? It's perfect. No, I feel like that because when I look back and how you were talking about remembering, it's like, wait a minute. I overcame all these challenges in childhood. I overcame all these challenges walking through an abusive relationship that helps others. I overcame walking through health, then business, now money. So it's like you look backwards and you're like, wait a minute, this is how I did it over here. Yeah. So I, so whatever you believe, like I believe in our creator, I believe in the universe, like they, you're in co-creation, it helps you, they help you. So I, we did it here, so now I can do it here. Yeah. The journey may be harder, like maybe here was a baby mountain. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or here was a mountain. Now maybe it's like, I don't know, Kilimanjaro. <laughs> now it's Mount Everest. Yes. Yeah, like, but oh you my guys, God. people climb Mount Everest in shorts. <laughs> so if they can climb Mount Everest in shorts, like you can walk through whatever journey <laughs> you're walking through. And it's also like how you do it. Yes. Because I remember like years ago, I would walk through mountains frustrated, angry. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't understand that it was the, the spiritual aspect, the struggle is what gives you the strength. Like that's how you build the muscle, the mental okay. muscle, the leg muscle climbing the damn mountain. <laughs> but what I found, but now yeah. I, like doing it with joy is so much different. But go ahead. Yeah. Well, what I found, I guess, to your point about you know how we are climbing the mountain and we're experiencing different things, is that for me, I knew you know that my job was to transform and inspire people and help them with a purpose. And, and I was scared of it. I was scared of being uncomfortable, leaving the comfort into that. But then what I realized is that there is no such thing as comfort. <laughs> and then what I realized is that that way you're talking about, whether it's a struggle, the fear, whether it is, you know, whatever discomfort we feel, it's going to be there no matter what. So we are uncomfortable when we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing because there's some part of us that wants to do it. And when we are uncomfortable when we're doing it because we are, like you're saying, creating a muscle to do it. And when I realized there was no such thing as no discomfort, I was like, oh, I'm running for discomfort and there's always discomfort anyway, so which one do I choose? Do I choose the one in which I am impacting more people and making more, more of a difference? Or do I choose the one in which I am keeping myself safe but small? I love how you just framed that. So simple and so true. And when I look back, and I'm sure this relates for your journey, when I was in corporate, that might be someone's ultimate dream. You know, that that's their dream, et cetera, great. But I realized for me, and obviously for you, that I was playing in a safe zone. I was playing in a comfortable zone. I was playing safe. And there was lots of uncomfort, but it was safe, predictable, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. 
versus like when you, you know, when you make yourself in co-creation larger to serve more, you realize there's a lot of unknown uncomfortable. But then when you train yourself to become comfortable with the uncomfortable, it's a whole different mindset. And you reminded me of the quote by Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. Look at any child. Yeah. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us. It is in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same, and we are liberated, set free, from our own fear. And our presence actually and automatically liberates others. Yeah. I love that. And, and what I love about that is that what I found on my journey, right? I have been doing this for six years. I have helped free many people. I have supported people with their purpose, uh, careers, and businesses. And what I've noticed is that everything we do has a ripple effect. Like when one person chooses to say, go after their gift, right? They hold a key to help another person. So every single choice we make impacts another person and another human being we have never met. And to me that has been like, well, like every decision I make, you know, now on, right, it has an impact. So it's not just the impact to you, but it's the impact to the other person. I, that's, you reminded me of the butterfly effect. Yes. And I just pulled it up. The effect grants the power, the butterfly effect grants the power to create a hurricane in China by a butterfly flapping its wings in New Mexico. It may take a long time, but the connection and the ripple effects at every juncture is so real. It's like, okay, just by one simple choice, either you go this direction or that direction. Yes. Like we are a product of our choices. Yes. So I love that. So let's get into meaningful freedom. Yes. I love all the topics we were explored, like so many connections, so much value, I'm sure, like from every angle. So in your uh, book, so her book is Meaningful Freedom, Finding Freedom Through Wholeness, and I already read all of it. Oh, so <laughs> I'm a big believer, you guys, of like if, if I'm talking to someone or hosting, like it's a, what is important to them is important to me, and then not just that, but it gives me more insight into your message and into your purpose. Thank you. Absolutely. So in her book, she has four stages that she believes of that meaningful freedom that can last your entire life. And several of these correlate to things that I aligned with, like how passion plus purpose equals profits. So definitely resonated. So the first stage that you talk about is to release ourselves of our own fears, molds, and let go of everything that no longer allows us to grow and sustain ourselves. So let's talk about that. Yes. Um, well, the biggest thing that I've realized for me is I have had a lot of identity shifts in my life. So, for example, I, I was born in Mexico, then I moved here to America, then I left all my life that I, you know, developed for 28 years, and then came back and, you know, to rebuild my life here. And then, then I went to corporate, then I became an entrepreneur, then I became a consultant, and then I became an author, right? So, all of these shifts. Um, happen and, and they happen to me and they happen to other people right like I, I bet you have had transitions in your life and you have dealt with changes in your life so as that happens right what is what is happening or the pain that we experience is in the attachment to the labels that we put ourselves to be in but when we are able to see ourselves in the essence of who we are then we have a constant, which is the essence of who we are. Like I'm inspirational by essence, I'm transformational by essence, I'm innovative by essence, you know, that's my essence. So whether I was in corporate or entrepreneurship or as a mom, I have those traits, right? So if we allow ourselves to be in environments where are aligned with that, and then we take out the mold, and we don't get, oh my God, I don't have that label anymore, oh my God, I'm upset about that. And instead you're like, well, my essence is still here and I can still use who I am as an essence in this new stage of life. And it's easier to let go of that particular role we we're playing in our life and step into this new role as who we are and be free. So, so much insight, so much wisdom. So I, several things resonated just to connect is 
like you talked about how the transition becomes easier because you're no longer attached to the box yes to the status to the recognition and it's almost like you're a child playing that it's like my essence and so like for me that came up with like years ago during a meditation practice it came up for me and um, we walk through like our childhood then we walk through like our middle stage and then currently so it came up for me that my words were i'm limitless i'm resilient and i'm priceless so when you think about that like you said when you compare the essence of us to use your words to what the world looks at or judges or the boxes we put ourselves in previously to free ourselves. I thought about that, I'm like, oh, I put myself or I allowed myself to be in boxes that would actually limit me. Mm -hmm. So that was a direct contradiction to my essence. I put myself in boxes that would test my resilience as opposed to simply being resilient and not allowing it to impact me, like a ball just bouncing off me, like realizing it's part of the process to grow, to right? Then I put myself in boxes where I allowed a price tag to be put on me. Mm -hmm. Instead of recognizing the essences, I'm priceless and the passion and purpose is there and the per people and the profits come. Yeah, but to not I be attached that. to the people and the profits first. Mm -hmm. It's a very different energy and it's a very different power when you stand firmly in your freedom that you have your passion, you have your purpose, and the people and the prophets will align to that versus when we put ourselves in bondage to people and prophets first. And I've definitely walked through that as well where, oh, the world says you have to be recognized, you have to have this, you have to have that, and being attached to that. It's different when it comes as a byproduct of being who you truly are. Yes, I think for me, what, what happened to me was you know, I have a child, he's five years old, and really, you know, he's a gift. Like, he doesn't have, you know, he doesn't have a title, or, you know, like, he has a name. And then he's a gift to the world, he makes the world amazing. So when we actually see ourselves like that, and we wake up in the morning, and we take all the titles around us, and then we see ourselves as that gift, then it's like, whoa, there's an unlimited opportunity for us to express who we are. And, and then we can use the titles and the roles we play as an opportunity to create an impact with who we are. Yeah. And when that shifted for me, then a new person emerged. Like, like a person that was able to be in essence of who I am and then with the roles create wonderful things and then serve somebody with it. Because it becomes a platform. Yes. It's like you have your platform of Virginia Nava or of transformative power. I have the platform of, well, and of yourself, obviously, yes. of myself, of herbal life nutrition, of fit life creation, of Instagram, of, you know, podcasts. Like those are platforms that we're able to reach more people in the essence of who you're being. Exactly. So people get to see, like now we have so much abundance. Like we were just talking about this, you guys, like the behind the scenes, like so many different things, which leads to your second stage. It's being responsible for our own lives. Yes. So it's walking in that first stage, but then, and you use this word earlier, responsibility, that becoming determined and self-reliant enough to learn that it is, the responsibility that is our attitude towards life, our choices in life, that will ultimately determine how well we connect with our inner strength and then bring it to wholeness. So being responsible for our freedom, being responsible for our health, our money, our business, and recognizing that the journey is, you know, the, the human journey is similar for people that have walked towards freedom, but also how it shows up in Virginia's life or in my life or in your life may be totally different. The order may be totally different. You know, your, your life journey, your story from prior to birth is different. Your birth is different than any of ours. Mm -hmm. It's like a unique thumbprint. Yes. Yes. And, and I believe uh, I was reading the, the book of Viktor Frankl, the meaning, um, meaningful existence and um, when I was reading that book, he said that they should be, you know, like, um, they should be the statue of liberty and the statue of responsibility. And to me, it was like, wow. I was like, so he was basically saying, you know, with freedom comes responsibility. And, and to me, what happened, it was, I remember, you know, I left corporate and I was like, okay, I'm going to be two weeks without doing anything. <laughs> and because, you know, I, I was, uh, I was working so much, you know, 80 hours a week. And like, I didn't even know what freedom was then. Right. Because I was like, so overwhelmed with work. And 
And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to play. So I just like give myself permission to play. And then after a while, I was like, you know what? This is cool, but you know, like what is it for? Now, what is this freedom for? And that was when the title Meaning for Freedom came because I'm like, what is my freedom for? Is it to play and that's it? Or am I here to create something? And that's where my inner exploration of purpose came to me. And again, the responsibility of my life was made for me, right? As to claim it, to claim who I am. But there is something deeper of that, like, right? Like all the opportunities of my life, all my education, my life, all these opportunities of corporate to go around the world that they were gifted to me in that career, right? Now they came as a responsibility to give back, to, to share, to, to actually be who I am, right? To be in alignment with who I am. And so the responsibility even of knowledge, right? Like once you know more, right? Like once you step into more transformation, now you know more. And you give it away. And as, as you know more, you share it. But also as you know more, then you have to also be aligned with that. And when you're out of alignment, you're like, oh my God, I'm out of alignment. Now I need to realign myself. And at the same time, what I found too in the last six years, because for me it has been a lot of experimentation, is that you have to have responsibility, but then at the same time you have to have self-acceptance and self-compassion for the journey. Because we're not perfect and we're in the journey because we're here to learn. Uh, so many things that you said <laughs> with that I love. Oh my God, but I'm gonna hit on three points. So one of my word, as you know, for 2019 is freedom. Yeah. So this, this episode, <laughs> like this whole topic, like is, you know, makes my soul sink. Uh, so, but with that, I'm very conscious and aware of alignment. Cool. And alignment and asking the question is who am I being in this moment? Who am I, what am I feeling in this moment? High vibrations, high vibes, joy, peace, love, abundance. And what am I doing in this moment? And is it an alignment with who I want to become and evolve into, into my future? Wow, I love that. Thank you. So it's, it's, I'm very aware of it, you know, from an intentional aspect during my morning routine. And every action that I take, like, is it in alignment with creating community? Is it in alignment with um, transformation, inspiration, with how I want to be in health, mm -hmm. with business, with money? And like you said, at the same time, the transformation doesn't happen overnight and it's giving yourself the grace and the compassion and i'm sure you've walked through quite a bit and i definitely have <laughs> yes. with shifting my life seven years ago from corporate till now from shifting the health from shifting the business now shifting the money fully to being super grateful on time freedom and location freedom but also walking through and i'm a big believer of the bigger the climb the bigger the blessing on the other side yes. And I've seen that time and time again with, you know, spiritual aspects, with mental aspects, with health, with uh, business, and now walking through quite a bit with money mm -hmm. and giving myself the grace step by step and trusting the process and trusting our creator in the universe in the alignment, in the steps, in the compassion for myself, because as we have compassion for ourselves, we increase our capacity to have compassion for others and patience because you can't give what you don't have yes and i realized how before i was so and i just posted this on one of my silent mentors i call like i have a lot of silent mentors too <laughs> Jill Addy, that i realized years ago how harsh i was with myself yes and in turn i was then harsh with others because if i didn't have it for myself well i couldn't hold the space for others yes and, and you know one of the things i've noticed in my work right like i do this work of uh helping people access their wisdom and share and encouraging them to share with the world and and what one syndrome i see for everybody is that it's like well let me wait to share it when, until like i just figure all of it out and i'm like dude no like if you know one step you know experience sharing. of sharing no so. i love like how you voice that from so many angles because like so just to share like a bit what happened before the episode so i'm very in tune with things happen on purpose. Yeah. So I was sharing with her that she was, you know, she was very sorry, like she ran into an accident, she was running a little bit late, and I was like, no worries, no problem. Like, and what's funny is, earlier today when I was doing my morning routine, it was like, oh, in my intention, and in my focus for the day, it's like, what could possibly cause you to stumble? And it's like, oh, I have a lot of meetings today, a lot of appointments, if something goes off, old me would stumble with that. And I'm like, nope. 
doesn't matter what happens, doesn't matter how it happens, it's gonna be perfect. And what you don't know is it created the space for me to connect with the apartment complex for an event that I'm hosting here oh. next week. Then it also created the space for one of my friends to reach out that we were supposed to have dinner today, but then like her other meetings like stumbled into today. So she was like, hey, I'm so sorry, don't kill me. I'm like, no problem, like whatever. Like, do you wanna meet tomorrow? Do you wanna meet next week? And she called me. And at first I was like, oh, well, I can't talk because Virginia's coming. I'm like, wait, I have time, I have time. And then <laughs> I, she told me, she's like, I have a friend coming in town. She just went through a breakup and she's struggling with it. And I thought your energy would be perfect for her to be around because you may or may not know, they may or may not know, but I actually made the decision for my own freedom. And again, everyone's journey is different. I just made the decision for my own journey in 2010 to not have sex till I get married. Oh wow. <laughs> and I never would have thought it was gonna take nine years. <laughs> That's a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> Um, that's a whole other topic <laughs> and to do it like with such joy and peace and knowing like God's given me the vision for my future husband and my mate and knowing that I needed this time to transform to be aligned as did he and to do it with such joy and peace and freedom and to be so excited about walking in my own freedom and when we come alongside our partner what I call a partner in purpose that it's a very different energy than when you're pulling from each other in a space of lack or in a space of thinking like you need this person to complete you. No, it's like partners in purpose, partners in shine, like walking together on this beautiful journey of life. It's very different. And she said to me like, I really feel like she would benefit from your energy and your perspective. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I was like, oh my God, I totally received that. Like, I'm super grateful that you think of me like this and that you would think of like this person I've never met, that I have this ability to influence her and to serve and to give. Yes. And I love what you said about um, partners in purpose because what I realized for me is I needed to be my first partner yes. in purpose. And if I was clear, you know, about what my purpose is and if I'm clear about who I am and what my essence are, is and what my gifts are, then I'm clear Then I am my first partner in purpose. Then when I align my energy, kind of like what you were saying, right? You align your energy with positive vibes and you're like, okay, it's all good, you know? So you align your energy into this purpose, into this powerhouse of purpose. Then now you walk in the, you know, you make actions that are aligned in the purpose. And then you, then the universe, well, at least for me, I believe in God, um, God brings you the people, right? So for me, like an example of how we met, right? Like I, I was, I was not sure I was going to make it because I have another appointment and I made, I was like, okay, I have to be there. I will be there. And whomever is going to be there is going to be the right person that I need to meet. So I basically did that, right? I aligned myself with my purpose of transforming, inspiring, and helping people with their gifts in the morning, right? Then, then I aligned my energy into that, and then I went to whatever I have to serve, right? And then I was like, okay, there's space now for this. I'm going to go do this. I have this amount of time, and then I am now allowing myself to receive from the divine, that divine appointment, that divine opportunity, right? But then it's kind of like this co-creation of showing Always. up, right? Of showing up in this alignment. But when we are out of alignment, we block that experience. When we come into that alignment, then things start just happening naturally and flowing. But to me, that is like a full-time job. And when we really understand that and do that, it's like, wow. It's like so... Miraculous. It's so much easier and miraculous. Yes. Well, no, I love that you said that. And I'm like, I absolutely, obviously, like I talked about earlier, felt the same way. And to your point, it's the alignment of, and I love that you talked about first being your own partner in purpose. Yes. Because I believe also like partner in purpose, that means I'm aligning to our creator. I'm aligning to the universe for my highest good. Yes. And then in that energy, and then take, believing that our creator is doing the same for like your partner in purpose versus my future partner in purpose. And then when you come together, it's like magical. Yes. Because you're both aligned first with you know, the creator, and then you're aligning together and there's, it eliminates the chaos. It becomes very simple. And that was part of my intention years ago. It's like, you know what, God, I want love. I want abundance. I want simplicity. I want ease. I am moving away from and freeing myself from complexity, chaos, lack, 
you know, disbelief, like all the things that are not of high vibration are not, are not of love. So I love that you talked about a lot of that. And so the fourth stage is, and we've definitely hit on this already, is determining what to do with our freedom, including how we attach meaning to it and create meaningful freedom in our lives every day. Yes. So to me, um, that is really important. And one of the things that I found myself creating, it was, it was after this process that I was doing these vision statements and these mission statements and these objectives. And I was noticing that one was going to Timbuktu and then one was in Atlanta. And I was like, whoa, like, you know. So during this process, I created this, um, or I was inspired to receive this um, thing called Why Matrix. And basically, it's like a formula that basically shows you all the elements of how to live in purpose. And there are constants of it. There's one constant, which is your essence, which is knowing and tapping into what the essence of who you are is. Then there is a second one, which is the guiding lights. What are the values that are guiding you to do something? And then the third part is the service and the purpose and the gift you want to bring in the world. <clears throat> and then when you come in alignment with that, then basically you're like, okay, well, I, for example, for me, I found myself that my values were meaning, authenticity, and freedom. And those were my three core values, right, into what I'm doing. Then my purpose is to help people with their gifts and sharing their gifts to the world so we can transform the world and make it better. And my essence is inspirational, transformational, and strategic. So basically, all of that combination became my businesses, right? Virginia Nava, my, my books, uh, my company, Transformative Power. And then what happens is once you have that done and really like figured out, then the world mirrors that person that needs that. And then that's when you become resonant and that's when you match, you get, you get your purpose match. When you, when you actually apply that meaning for freedom into service of another person that wants that. So to me, that is really the active aspect of meaning for freedom. And the other aspect of meaning for freedom is an internal job. And what I found is that there's 12 inner gifts inside of us. And everything we want outside of us is something that we can give ourselves inside of us. So we want peace. We have inner peace. If we want value, we have inner value. If we want worth, we have inner worth. So all of these things that we're looking for, whether it's love, whether it's all these different aspects, are internal. When we are able to, to tap into that internal aspect, then we're actually free because then we're giving, like you're saying, from a full cup instead of from a half cup. And then also, it's not just for us, it's also for being able to be the transformative leaders, the visionaries, the, you know, the people that are bringing this new perspective into the world and how we can be a meaningful freedom ambassador, that's what I call, I call it, because it's that person that is responsible for themselves, for accessing all of this love and worth and value inside of ourselves, and then now we can come into a place and be of service because we're coming from a place of an abundant self into the world. So, so that's to me what the journey to meaningful freedom is. And I do also believe that part of the journey to meaningful freedom is acceptance because there are going to be, part of, there are going to be parts of the journey that are really difficult for us because of our limiting beliefs or how we were brought and we need to heal them. So they're going to be kind of like our kryptonite. So we're going to be like superheroes and we're going to have this kryptonite. And that kryptonite that happens is going to be this constant lesson that we're learning and then it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a constant in different situations. And the only way for me that I've found a way to actually manage those lessons is through great deals of self-compassion, great deals of self-acceptance, and one new thing that I found, which is so cool, which is self-transcendence. When you realize that the world is bigger than you, the universe is bigger than you, and the higher power has a higher purpose for you, then you realize that those lessons are actually here for the start. So then in that combination, your meaningful freedom comes from your intention and your inspiration and your action, but it also comes from the humbleness of the humanity that we're learning 
so that we can actually be connected both spiritually and at a human level absolutely love that so so much wisdom so much insight so much freedom so a couple of things that you hit on i'm also listening right now to like the full aspect being the full vessel being the full cup serving from a space of overflow um as many of us and virginia resonate like a lot of us have seen examples of serving from an empty cup you know, and I've definitely been there when, you know, just so many different aspects, right? When I talked about the health journey, et cetera. And especially in our time or so many things, right? Like giving from an empty cup. And I'm reading right now or listening to the book by Rachel Hollis, Girl, Stop Apologizing. I love that. And literally <laughs> yesterday I was listening where she says, you know, we have this tendency, especially as women, that it's like, oh, I have my vase and my vase is full of water. Like I'm a vase, a vessel, right? And oh, let me spill some water over here. Let me spill some water over here. Let me spill some water over here. Because we think it's a different mindset versus when you stand and it's like, okay, let me pour into my cup. Let me pour into my cup. Well, then what's gonna happen? The vase starts to overflow. And it's overflowing everywhere around you easily and it's impacting people just the same. Mm -hmm. But the energy is very different when you're doing it from a space of overflow because you, you have so much love abundance faith within like no different we're having a conversation mm -hmm. and we're sharing this with you so it's coming from a space of overflow we're not running to your house we're not running you know to you know email you 50 things which it's not to say those things are bad but it's looking at how can i give from a space of overflow that's easier right then you talked about people and people coming in alignment and when you're in alignment with these four stages and of service how it becomes easier. And I always look at more and more, and I'm sure you do this too, yeah. that, oh, who am I attracting? <laughs> Who's in my space? Who's an influencer? Who's a coach? Who's a blogger that's coming? Who's a podcast feature? Who is uh, paying me? And are they people that are showing faith, love, abundance, and gratitude? And I see, like, especially now, compared to like a year ago, so many more people, so much more ease, so much more alignment, so many people showing up, not for themselves, mm -hmm. so much more gratitude, and then I'm blessed even more with their energy, with their money, with their presence, like Virginia being here, and it's a whole different energy than people I used to allow or surround myself with years ago. And it makes you realize like what is possible to create, to be free, to, impact others and to make money doing what, what you love yes and, and i feel that one thing that is really important is to realize that that you you become the mirror of, of what you believe you are so when you're able to see yourself in the mirror and you can see yourself through freedom in the mirror then that's when freedom comes because then, it, so, so whatever happened to you, right? Like you maybe saw yourself in a certain you know, way and then you identify yourself as that particular role and you created that, right? But then something shifted inside of you and then now you, you see yourself as, as now this, right? Yes. And then you became bigger, right? So, so as you see yourself in the mirror, then you're kind of creating what you see. So when you see this beautiful being of who you are, when you see the beautiful essence of who you are, when you're able to accept, you know, the flows that you, you have and then be like, okay, I'm going to grow in this area. And then really realize that we are all growing, you know, that it's not, you know, it's, it's a normal process to grow. Then now you can see yourself free with freedom. Absolutely. Yeah. So beautiful. So, wow. Such a great conversation on so many levels. So appreciate your wisdom, your insight, your light your shine on. I posted something about that this morning. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you so much, Virginia, for being here, for sharing about your book. Um, they can find you at virginianava.com, including your blog, including freebies, including your book. Yes. Including courses, strategy sessions, and much more. Yes. Um, anything else that you want to share as we close and you want to leave um, everyone with? Yes. Well, um, first of all, I want to really inspire you to really be free and then realize that freedom comes from within, that, that it's really not true that freedom is in the outside. And then when you realize that, you know that you hold the key to your freedom. So whatever it is that you feel caged on, 
you put yourself there and just as you put yourself there you can open the key and get yourself out of there and you can always have somebody to help you and then second of all to realize that you are meant to be an amazing human being that serves many many people and including your journey including the aspects of your journey that seem not great are also meant to serve people so everything in your journey matters and all your wisdom matters so thank you so much for listening and you can find more information as you mentioned about my books um, and uh, inspiration and the type of programs I have. I also have a company called Transformative Power who helps people that know their purpose and want to share with the world so they can impact more people. So you can access more information about my strategic uh, abilities there. And we're having an event. Can I share about the event? Maybe? Yes, sure. We're having an event next week, um, March 15, called um, Soul Expression, Elevate Your Soul Expression, with other four transformational um, leaders. And I would love to have you, because in that event, we're going to help people go back to love, go back to ease and presence and essence, and stop being in the perfectionist route and procrastination and all of the things that really are what holding us back from that freedom so really we can impact the world with who we are so i hope you can make it and it is in eventbrite elevate your soul expression uh, march 15 and you can also find it uh, if you connect with me uh, via social media uh, at virginia nava thank you so much thank, thank you, you so much guys me. absolutely <laughs> bye